in this video, this is kind of going to be the start of a little series that I'm going to be doing. And ultimately what we're going to do is basically make an escape room game. Now it's going to be relatively simple. There's not going to be, you know, any crazy features. I don't even know what all it's going to really entail. But all I know is I don't want to make this a super long series like the Nazi Zombies series that stretched over 240, well about 240 videos. And it's still not done. I want this one to be kind of start to finish. So it's going to cover basic aspects, but I can tell you right now from the start, just like with most of my series, because everyone likes doing it, it is going to be multiplayer ready. So everything's going to work in a multiplayer environment. I do want to incorporate uh, the Steam online subsystem. So I want to have a basic server browser, just a very simple menu, and that sort of thing. So that way you can, you know, create the sessions, join and play with your friends if you wish to. Now, to begin, the only thing I've done so far is created a third-person project, just using the third-person template, C++ obviously, and I've named it Escape Room YT for YouTube. And I've came down here to Settings, Plugins, and I disabled everything related to VR because it, it's very annoying when Steam VR pops up. Now, the only other thing I'm going to do for this video is go to Project Settings and put Axis Mappings, and I'm pretty much going to delete everything related to VR again. So Vive, Mixed Reality, Oculus, all that kind of stuff is going to just get taken out because obviously we're not doing anything related to VR. And may as well leave the controller, but I think that's pretty much it. Uh, or no more actions and delete reset VR entirely file save go to our escape from or our character.h because I want to be using this probably just for the base at least for now anyways and I'm going to delete everything again related to VR as well as the comments that are just kind of wasting up some space because it's really self-explanatory what they actually do so reset VR, touch started, uh, that's everything in the header. Let's go to the .cpp. Remove all of the VR related input bindings. Remove the on reset VR, touch started and touch stopped. And I think that is pretty much everything. Now I'm going to go ahead and close down the editor. I'm going to go ahead and build the game. Go ahead and relaunch. And the last thing I want to do is I want to enable live coding. So I'm going to come down here to compile, click the little drop down, and enable live coding. So what this is going to do, it's going to allow us to do very simple things. So I'll actually do an example. Let's find, where's the, here it is. So move forward, we have this move forward function. So whenever I go to move forward like this, as you can see down here in the log, nothing happens. But if I do UE log moving forwards, I can just do that, press control S to save, come right back into the game, and I'll even be moving forward like this, but when I press control alt F11, the live coding window pops up and it finished, and now you can see moving forward is getting spammed. So it's pretty much, it's as it says, it's live coding. So as you make a change, you can save it, press Control alt f 11 to quote unquote kind of compile it just on the fly. And you can do this while you're playing as well. So it's great for testing in that way. The uh, only drawback is if you make a change to the .h, the header, you, uh, you might run into some problems similar to that that you would run into with high reload. So oftentimes whenever I make a change to the .h, in the header, I will restart the editor, recompile, and relaunch the editor. But anytime you make a change to the .cpp, use live coding. It's quite reliable. I haven't had any issues yet. And overall, it's faster and I like the system. So that's pretty much all we're going to do. Yeah, that is all we're going to do for this video. I'm going to remove the include. I don't think there's anything else related to VR. Not that I can tell. So yeah, that's going to be it for this video. And in the next one, we're actually going to get started with some basic development. Or better yet, we're going to come up with a simple plan of what we're going to at least try to accomplish from the start. So roughly the gameplay aspects. 
So, as always, if you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, feel free to join my Patreon down the description. That's linked in the description below, where we have a Team Deathmatch tutorial series just for Patrons using Team or using Unreal Engine with C++. And we make a bunch of cool stuff. And if you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to join my Discord down below, and I'll try to help you out. So, I'll see you in the next video.